Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at issues behind the news. The IPP office has provided insight into South Africa's latest battery storage tender, as well as some other procurement programs. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi How is South Africa going about procuring battery storage? You know, South Africa's got a public procurement uh, framework that's been in place since around 2010, 2011, when we first procured the renewable energy projects. And that sort of, that framework remains in place for some of the other technologies. We know it was massively disrupted uh, during the state capture era from about 2015. There was no procurement that took place and uh, it only really started getting going again in 2020. And there's been a lot of delays and a lot of stop start as, as we've re uh, ramped up in that procurement. And that's largely to do with uh, grid capacity or connection issues that we're still struggling with. And then there was also, you know, COVID and the supply chain disruptions that happened around that that affected some of the bid windows. So we're using that framework, that public procurement framework. There is a separate battery storage program that Eskom is running, and that comes from a World Bank loan uh, that was initially designed to go into a concentrated solar power plant. But it was found that this was a better fit, battery storage was a better fit and more cost effective for Eskom. So they're rolling out their own battery storage. But we've got uh, under uh, the integrated resource plan of 2019, uh, we've got an allocation for battery energy storage. Um, and it's, uh, that allocation uh, is now being procured through three bid windows. The first bid window has been completed and the preferred bidders have been announced and projects will enter into construction um, when they get to financial close. Uh, now we've got two concurrent bid windows, bid window two and bid window three, which are in the market at the moment. And uh, they are looking to mop up the rest of that allocation. So around um, 616 megawatts each, around 2,400 megawatt hours piece and uh, these have been set at specifically selected substations. So bid window one we looked at all the substations, five of them in the Northern Cape, bid window two all five are in the Northwest province and uh, bid window three all five are in the Free State province and these have been selected really because Eskom sees the pairing particularly of solar PV generation uh, with, um, with battery as the best uh, outcome for them as well as these sites have been selected using a number of criteria would have been put through an algorithm that uh, Eskom then selects where uh, these substations should be. And generally, um, you know, the capacity in places like the Eastern and uh, Western Cape and the Northern Cape has been highly absorbed in terms of substation capacity. So the best uh, provinces that are now rising are outside of that, uh, that very, very potent solar province of the Northern Cape, but in also extremely potent solar provinces where a lot of activity around procuring new solar PV at a utility scale is underway, so the Northwest and the Free State. And we'll have to see in future uh, if there is more battery storage to be procured uh, once we have a new integrated resource plan where these uh, new sites are, but also whether we procure it in this way, I, I don't know. You know um, this is a very particular way of procuring and maybe is, may not be fit for purpose into the future, but uh, be that as it may, this is how we are procuring for now. And it is, these are large batteries, these are large programs, and uh, uh, th these are now gaining some sort of traction. As with other public procurement programs, there have been some delays. Yes, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's been massive stop starts around our public procurement in particular. Um, since since resuming in around 2020, and uh, there's also been a uh, you know prior to that we always used to have those projects moving almost directly from um, from preferred bidder into financial close into construction. There have been big delays since uh, the resumption, and it hasn't been as smooth sailing. We know the risk mitigation around, which has had some very big battery programs in them as well those were, were disrupted massively. We know bid window five was uh, disrupted by uh, the COVID uh, log jams around supply chains and many of those projects didn't close. We know that bid window six 
for renewables, the, 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 only the solar projects got through the gate because there were of the grid capacity issues in the Western Cape uh, and the Eastern Cape where most bidders were bidding and so none of the wind projects proceeded. We know that the bid window 7 has been delayed slightly by about a month in terms of bidding and bidding hasn't yet happened. It should have been the end of uh, April. And now we see with bid window two of the battery storage program, that's been shifted uh, out uh, uh, as well. And then bid window three, it's the new date is uh, October 31. So much later than initially expected, three months later than initially expected. So delays are part of it, uh, but it's also a lot about readjusting to this grid constraint and to ESKIM's uh, uh, grid allocation rules, the interim rules that are in place that take some time to navigate and require a lot of detail from the IPPs up front. Some of this used to be, so it's not necessarily more volume or detail or data, but it's just the sequencing. And this has led to so, sort of a, a number of delays in actually getting first your cost estimate letter to be able to bid into the project. And then once you become a preferred bidder to convert that cost estimate letter into a bid budget quote, it now takes six months and that has meant that the time frames are having to be adjusted. So with bid window three, for instance, uh, there's going to be eight months from uh, preferred bidder to getting to commercial close, whereas it used to be six months, just to cater for that six months that it takes uh, Eskom to actually convert a cost estimate letter into budget quote. So there are a number of delays, but I think some of these new time frames are realistic, more realistic. But even with these more realistic time frames, we've been seeing um, some delays beyond that. And then, of course, it's become com also complicated in a good way by the fact there's also private bidders coming through and uh, looking for grid. And uh, gr they are able to approach Eskim directly because they're doing it outside of the public procurement program. And they are able to go for a budget quote, uh, not hold a cost estimate letter for the duration of a public procurement bidding processes, which is what the rules are for the public uh, procurement. So that means that there's a there's a slew of applications coming to Eskom's grid access units who are having to adjust as well. What is the likely market reaction to these developments? I think for bidders, the reaction will be actually one of some relief because the amount of uh, paperwork, the amount of data. Uh, that you have to get together to put through a bid for battery storage or for renewables, but in this case, battery energy storage is it's, it's voluminous, and it's really it's a lot of it's a lot of um, upfront um, sequencing and getting all those approvals in place. Obviously, we do have uh, dispensations like the Energy One Stop Shop uh, that the DTRC is running. We've got dispensations from the DFFE, the Environmental Department, around environmental authorizations that are coming through, which are in place both for the public and private sector. But even there, it's take, it takes time, and there aren't uh, exemptions for every area. So I think it's all about there's been teething problems, but it's around this um, getting all these uh, authorization, but it's really around the grid access issues where the, log, the sort of main bottleneck has emerged. And Eskim is having to, uh, you know, navigate that, juggle a lot of balls in the air. They've introduced a curtailment framework, which is almost very important for unlocking wind, particularly in the western, northern, and eastern Cape. But uh, this this uh, is a physical constraint. At some point, that has to be dealt with through physical assets. Uh, obviously, battery storage helps a lot, uh, and uh, all these battery storage programs come with additional services, not just capacity and energy, but ancillary services, which will help relieve grid, grid uh, pressure on the grid. But eventually we have to add the, the wires and the substations. And we have to do this not only at the transmission level, but also it's becoming increasingly urgent to deal with the distribution level backlogs. So that, that I think is going to be the next area of focus uh, where the private sector participation could play a big role in starting to build those physical assets that we are, we know that we're going to need, need well into the future as more and more uh, wind and solar variable renewable generation comes in in areas of the country where 
you know, the grid is not really in place or is not very strong because we've had a very north to south uh, profile with most of the grid uh, in major corridors taking coal power down to the rest of the country. That's going to change and there's going to be a reversal of flow. So that focus on the transmission grid is becoming more intense, but there's an urgency now to see some action around actual construction. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.